Dad and Rock presents the Invasion After Show. This is Sean. And this is Chris. And tonight we're talking about Season 1, Episode 9, Full of Stars. Full of Stars. There we go. Full, full, full something. Full uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who are we? What are we? What are we doing? Okay, we are Dad and Rock. We've been doing this each and every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Talking about Invasion, as you guys can see, we're up to episode nine now. Uh, only one episode left of Invasion next week. Um, and after that, we'll actually be moving on to a couple different things, uh, including uh, doing little reviews and kind of mini after shows for The Witcher season two, which is coming out to Netflix here very soon. Uh, but yeah, you can check out dadandrock.com for everything that we do. There we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. Already got a comment. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey good evening, back. Madeline. Yes. Have you, have you um, caught up? Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. I, I'll up front on Front Street here. I actually, I think I enjoyed this episode uh, the most so far. Oh yeah. No, I, I well, oh for the entire season. Yeah. Uh, okay. I still think I put Home Invasion just a little bit ahead of this one. Mm -hmm. but not a lot this one here did a lot for me there was a lot of moving the story forward a lot of things explained there was it was a lot of things that uh i really enjoyed about it. i think after i watched it with watching i meant sent you a message like you know what this one this episode has given me some hope that yeah. they may stick the landing of the finale yeah yeah it's progressively gotten better and better especially well since the plot is ramped up a lot of those lingering mysteries just aren't as mysterious, I guess, now that we've seen the aliens and things were um, just so much kind of in shadow as far as, you know, we, there are more questions than answers. And yeah. uh, progressively, it's been it's been getting a bit better. And now it's just like totally like plot and action driven. Yep. Uh, or at least mostly, uh, which is, has been very entertaining. Yeah, this episode gave me feel like I can feel influences in this episode in other movies. Mm -hmm. uh quite a bit now well i'll bring them up along the way but there was uh there was a few but uh there was a comment dropped uh by someone that watched one of our videos i for the life of me i can't find the exact comment i can't i'll love to give the guy you know the credit for it <laughs> uh, but i mean i i'm sorry, sorry pal. <laughs> if it's you but, just comment again yeah exactly but he mentioned how like these aliens that we're seeing in the show so far are more like biological weapons they're not like per se like the aliens that would be on the mothership essentially you know mm -hmm. what i mean and they're just kind of attacking us and lowering getting rid of you know the threat which would be us in this instance and making the you know atmosphere something that is you know good for them to go ahead and harvest a planet yeah and it made me think of a whole nother movie and it uh it break down the lines of the kaijus within the pacific rim you know mm. those first few that actually come through the you know the void were eliminating the human risk and actually making the atmosphere so the larger ones can come through and harvest. So I, I kind of see what they were saying in that aspect, where it, there's influences from that movie just on what we've already seen from this show. Yeah, I think that is, I think there may be something to that because even in this episode in uh, Mitsuki's um, um, plot or whatever, there's a, uh, one of the uh, satellite, uh, I don't know, engineers, one of the guys listening to this stuff the whole time in that big yeah. satellite station, he mentions these are synthetics um which and, and kind of um i don't know it kind of because of the way they're I, I don't know it's like an alien synthetic so if these are actually synthetics meaning like they're almost the aliens versions of robots that would come down and like you said like just terraform the planet get it to the proper settings for the actual biological version of those aliens yeah. to come in at a different point um so that may be the aliens mo is to send these like scout ships almost to go ahead and like take these planets over just to lay the groundwork for them to come down later, which honestly, you know, given the end of this episode, spoiler alert, I don't know how successful that nuke was, but if it was, this might've been just a scout ship and, and the big daddy's on the way. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Let's, let's kind of dig into it a little bit here. Where, where do you want to start? Well, let's start with uh, Mitsuki in Tokyo. I don't know if it's in Tokyo anymore. It's in Japan in the satellite station. Um, but, uh, that's where she is now. But in the very beginning of the episode, we have this flashback scene with her and the astronaut, which is, we haven't gotten that so far because yeah. the show opened up with the astronaut in her bed, yeah, just kind of talking yeah. to herself. Um, and then they had that brief scene in the actual shuttle when there was a, a communications error and, and Mitsuki had to come in and fix it. 
Uh, but now we got to actually see a scene with these scenes where they have that attraction to each other. They just started. You could tell maybe they're just coming back from her to her place from a date or something. And uh, they were talking about David Bowie, that big David Bowie poster that's been on Natsuki's apartment wall, uh, which plays into the uh, the episode a lot later. Uh, but what do you feel about this uh, flashback scene? The flash, I mean, it gave a lot of relevance to, yeah. you know, the feelings on why she's not letting go, why she's fighting so much to go ahead and find her. Uh, not, you know, not one to believe that she actually is gone. Right. So, I mean, it, it gave a lot of that, but I, I don't know if it was... I don't know if that was really necessary at this point of the show. I think we all understand to this point, it was what the relationship was strong. I, I don't know if yeah. they just gave us that portion so they can give us the David Bowie song that ties. I mean, it's fantastic. Probably. Right. You know, for the way the show ends. Uh, but I mean, it, it was, it was fitting. It, it, it didn't draw out too long. It was there. It gave us a little more context and it, they moved on from it. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny when you talk about that, this it makes me think that this show, and that's maybe one of my uh, issues with it too, is that it's very writerly, meaning that you can see the writer typing things out as you're watching the show. Like the best shows, you don't, you don't think of plot mechanics like that. The best shows that you watch, you're just completely lost in it. And, you know, you're just taken from one scene to the next and you're totally sucked in. There's a lot of times in the show where I'm like, oh, I know why they planted this thing here is so we could have these repercussions here in, in a writer's sense. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, that's very plot. Like I'm thinking about the mechanics of the plot as I'm watching the show, which is not something you want to be doing. No, yeah, yeah. You want to be completely immersed in the show. You want to forget. You almost want to forget you're watching the show. You want to you right. be like sucked into it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and there's a lot of instances where it doesn't happen in this show. But I would argue there was a few instances in this very episode that I got tunnel vision. Like I was taking. Oh, notes sure. And I just was like all locked in. I actually had to back up so I can actually take some notes to help us along, you know, you know, with us here this evening. Mm -hmm. But I was like, OK, that, that got me that that really served its purpose. And it actually got me sucked in. I got tense when Travante and Casper and Jamila were being surrounded and we kept cutting to um, Anisha and her family running through the woods. Well, being see, chased. That's what they did great in this episode, which they yeah. were not doing well in prior episodes. Right. Yeah. They basically fixed the issues we had with prior episodes in this one here with cutting back and forth and showing yeah. us things happening at the exact same time and giving us, you know, context on situations that are all ha ha happen yeah the editing in this episode yeah was head and shoulders better than some of the editing done because the editing in some of the other episodes it and i've said this before it felt like like an old school abc uh wednesday afternoon soap opera <laughs> where you would just be invested in a scene and then all of a sudden kind of come crashing down okay here we're, we're in the new scene invest in that scene come crashing down okay here's a new scene as opposed to really having a smart juxtaposition as far as each scene each location each character and in, informing the the scene after it which is what happens in this one and especially towards the end when you're they were really ratcheting up that that tension because i'm like each time i'm like oh god they're surrounded oh my god the aliens are so close to them they're not they're never going to get out of this then oh god they're chasing through woods now the guys are got guns and they're anisha needs to run like towards the end of this episode i was like kind of you know my my hands were clenched to the armchair <laughs> yeah and, Mad and madeline agrees this is the best episode but seven of nine yeah yeah <laughs> there mean, yeah go, yeah madeline. Yeah, I, I know we're, we're kind of there with you. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's weird because it's like it's a it's a it's a fine show. It's a good show. It's got a good cast. And there are actually a lot of, of aspects of the show that are really good. But I think just the potential where you could see where, wow, that could have been even better. I, yeah. But I mean, that's a conversation for the show at large. Maybe something we can have uh, after the, the season finale. Yeah. Talk next about the show. season yeah, as a whole. Ex exactly. Uh, but yeah, we'll go back to, you know, Japan and um, Matsuki. I, I, I'm terrible at these two names, honestly. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. But, Matsuki um, and Hanada. But well, we go back and we're back. Okay, so we we do the whole you know flashback to where they are, and then it jumps to her, you know current stages where she's responding to the Weijo because now we see uh, Hinata. 
She's floating right. through space, and we don't yeah. know if it's her alive. That okay. So right out the gate, that took me out of the show. I'm like, I did no me way. too. I was so confused because I was like, wait a second, she did not have her suit and helmet on when that thing crashed and she got sucked out of the spaceship. I know because she was sitting there on the computer. She didn't have yeah her astronaut helmet on. So when she's like has her astronaut helmet on, it was floating through space. I'm like, wait a second. Is the show trying to cheat this and say that she actually did survive mm -hmm. that thing? Not to mention there was no oxygen on her suit. So she wasn't <laughs> right. connected to anything. So how was she? No, that right there, the beginning of it had me concerned. Yeah. I was like, oh boy, are we going to, are we going to do something here that is completely I can't suspend my belief at all for this because that, yeah, I was too. I was like, Oh no, are they really pulling this thing where Mitsuki has been right the whole time? And somehow she did miraculously survive this thing. Like that would have been a bridge way too far for me, but luckily it just, I mean, it just turns out that Mitsuki was dreaming. I guess it was a dream. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Cause her, her head was down at the actual uh, trans transponder station or wherever yeah. she was sending the signal out. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they do get a signal. They do get something back uh, from her. And they find out that, you know, later when they're actually kind of measuring things, they notice that she's not breathing. There's no breath along with it. It's just right. Kind Thank of God they had the scientists here that would measure that kind of thing and have an ear for that. <laughs> yeah. And thank God they had the father there that would know a little bit better about whether or not something is actually his daughter. Um, yeah. So that was interesting, though. So Mitsuki, she actually gave the aliens a tool to trick us, essentially, by sending all these video files. And that's what they were afraid of. And yeah. one, that one guy she was with, it's like, are, are, are we now dead? And you know what I mean? It's like his, his fear was since she sent all that information, would that have been the downfall of the, you know, the human race? Which oh, if very near was. Yeah. And it's funny. It's kind of it almost it almost turned this uh, typical plot device on its head. Any other show where there have been a lot of other shows where it turns out the aliens are good and the nuke is like the last option, like an Avengers movie or something like, no, don't drop the nuke. Give me, you know, two more minutes and I can save the day where the nuke is like, you know, this. But here in this episode, this show is like, yeah, nuke the bastards. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this thing. <laughs> we'll push Mitsuki out of the room and nuke the bastards. Well, I mean, she's going on and she's upset and then she barges in in a. We see a little bit of the U.S. general earlier, yeah. But then she actually busts in a room where he's actually sitting, and uh, we get a little bit of this scene here. It's her. You think that changes anything? You will kill her. My president is willing to sacrifice one life if it means saving millions. Are you? Is done. For what it's worth, I think you stalled them long enough for us to fight back. Yeah, and I this is something I've been saying the whole season with Mitsuki's storyline. I'm like, Mitsuki is incredibly brilliant. Like she's brilliant. She's she's very capable. And her whole storyline this year has been, I, I know my girlfriend is up there and I need to save her. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the entire planet around her, planet Earth, and all of its citizens are under duress and dying. And there's this big existential threat of this alien invasion, which she it seems like she could care less about. <laughs> yeah, no, and it was spot on, honestly. I mean, but I got to give Matsuki credit. She nodded along saying one person's life was not worth millions of people's lives. Right. She kind of agreed with them. And then I also liked how the general actually gave her credit for stalling long enough to give them an actual fighting chance. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Madeline says, right. <laughs> Maybe she agrees with the Mitsuki storyline here. Um, and then we've got... Um, Tara is joining us here this evening. Hello, Tara. Yeah, nice thanks to, for nice you to coming and yeah, joining us. That's awesome. Uh, once again, uh, you and the family, Anisha's kids and the family there, Sarah, um, they that was incredible. We'll talk about them a little later. In yeah, we show, haven't quite but, gotten to you guys yet, but yeah. Yeah, but that was some dramatic stuff, too. That was crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is kind of where we leave. And the, really, the only other thing is that there was kind of this back and forth, whether or not they were debating whether or not it was really 
um, Hanada on the other end. Yeah. And this is, I'm still confused because it's like, she asked, you know, if it's really you, what did you say, you know, at her first date or whatnot? And that's when David Bowie's song started to play. Yeah. And that seems to me like, would aliens know to do that? Would aliens know, like understand like a sentimental memory and be able to like, like, I don't know. This is where I'm kind of like, well, is, there were it, thousands of files sent and thousands of videos. Yeah, so right. it, it it's within plausible belief right that somewhere in there there was that connection to david bowie outside of just the memory that she had with her in the flashback mm -hmm. because even her dad said she loved david bowie yeah so i i i i'll, I'll accept that because i would think there's somewhere in their memory of the two of them if somewhere there was more than just that one poster that was up right and that's why I'm so I'm still kind of like confused or or like maybe the aliens are that smart and that devious that they would use a sentimental memory. Well, like there's no way song. for them to actually contact back. Even the general mentioned it and part of the clip that we weren't able to we didn't play here. Yeah, but they were using I'll use uh, Transformers Bumblebee. Right. When he was talking back <laughs> in, you know. And radio and radio uh, songs. So yeah. in this here, when they seen that there was those memories of David Bowie, they just used a song. I don't know how they would get a hold of the song, but they've got a song to play in return, thinking hopefully that they'll get that reaction from her saying that, oh, she is there. She is a lot. You know what she was hoping for. So you're 100 percent sure that Hanada died basically on impact. And this is in no way her actual consciousness aboard the alien ship that's talking to them right yeah so this is a hundred percent the aliens being devious and trying to trick the people down here Mitsuki in, in, in you know particularly yeah but i don't know how far tricking just matsuki would really mean but yeah yeah I, I well i mean she's the only one that's talking to him like directly at this point yeah okay she's the only con yeah only contact so uh yeah okay you know what yeah I'll, i i am hanada's dead a hundred percent now by the end of this episode, but I believe she was dead this whole time. Right. And then this here is just them trying to infiltrate us even more. However, that you. would be. I think I'm leaning towards that too. But during, while I was watching the episode, I was kind of going back and forth. I was like, and that's the way they played it. I think where you're supposed to question, like what is really going on here? Um, but yeah, at the, at the end of the episode, I'm leaning towards the aliens were just being that devious, which is, which is in itself is, you know, that's bad. <laughs> if they're yeah. that smart to like play at our heartstrings, that's that's bad. But yeah, uh, I mean, that's pretty much where we we end off. We with the whole general of uh, the song playing. They find out that, that they weren't playing the song, and the general saying, you know, the decision's been made. It's already done. We we have a target, and right. essentially, without saying the word thank you, he thanked her for giving him that ability to fight back yeah and i think he's giving her a lot of leeway storming into his office because he is he does recognize the fact that without her they probably wouldn't be in the position that they are yeah um which for the first time it seems like they have a uh you know a stake in the game um so that's a good thing um yeah so let's move on to london jolly old london england and trevante and casper and jamila uh the three of them there yeah and uh, they have a heck of a time too yeah, this was, I mean, this had a feeling a lot like Home Invasion did. Mm -hmm. You know, when the Moloks are in the house and the alien, the, what was it? I think it was just one alien at the time, was coming after them. Yeah. Now, I mean, Casper pulls his power move again. He walks <laughs> into the hospital and he said, put me in a seizure. The doctor says, no. <laughs> I like that. Well, to be fair, this time he had Trevante at his back in his corner, which uh, he's a little bit more intimidating, I'd say. <laughs> and armed. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh. They went ahead and actually did it, but we find out a little bit more about Casper and about Trevante, you know, in that, in that period of time when neither of them really knew what the next step was going to be. And we find out, you know, Trevante basically had a, had a son. Yeah. But the, they never said it, but I think when the, the, his son was born, he never left the hospital. Right. And I think he passed in the hospital as basically an, an infant which I would understand why he wouldn't want to go to the hospital. There was good storyline development with Cravante 
in particular, but Casper too a little bit. That she, I really like that scene that they shared where uh, Casper was already in you know the the tube. I forget what you call it, uh, the thing to induce a seizure, and they were talking a bit back and forth between the mic and the speaker, uh, the speaker and the microphone. Um, but Casper calls him on. He was like earlier. You said you know you know to come back here was a big deal for you. And by here, I didn't know if Travante meant coming to London, uh, but he meant coming back to a hospital, a hospital in general. Yeah. And at first I thought it was because he pulled his, uh, his uh, cohort, his, his fellow soldier out of that hospital um, back in Afghanistan. But no, that's not it. It's something else, something deeper. It's completely different than that. Yeah. Right. Um, And basically confirms the theory that you and I had a couple episodes ago after that phone call Travante had with uh, his loved one, uh, where they said, you know, I still love him. It's, yeah, they were they were talking about his his son. Uh, yeah, which yeah, big developments here, and you really, man, you really feel for Travante. Oh, then you find out a little bit more about you know Casper and his family life and how yeah. his dad hurt his mom, then took off and everything, and just yeah, the the back and forth. Uh, it, it felt nice. It felt it did. It felt, it felt like an actual uh, a bonding moment in a situation which would be hard to actually have. Yeah, it felt it was cool because it's like we've been watching these characters separately through their own storylines and trying to pick up pieces here and there of their history. But that for them to be basically sharing the same space and talking to each other and asking each other about their history and for us, the audience, to be picking up on that and bear witness to that, that was it was like very satisfying. Like, oh, finally, we're getting some discussion about who you guys are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was good. Hey guys, if you're at this point already and you're watching this and you haven't already uh, subscribed and hit that like button, uh, please do so. It, it goes a long way for us. I mean, we're talking about the show. We this is something we would do, yeah. Uh, regardless, if we were doing it on you know, on YouTube, which is just just a fun way for us to you know go ahead and <laughs> hopefully entertain you guys as well. But uh, drop a comment. We're interactive, and uh, we'll keep this show moving along. Yeah, absolutely. So they induce the seizure in uh casper and it works like a charm just like casper thought it would he seems to have a good understanding of what's going on here and yeah he's he sees it he's having like big time visions yeah um all kinds of stuff and he's basically like we thought he's almost he's almost like patching into the alien network where he hears all of them he's okay now this is a movie that this reminded me of and it wasn't so much see casper's i think more real time the movie I'm going to refer to is more of a flashback. And when this was all happening to Casper, I thought fire in the sky. Mm, yeah. I, I felt like, like fire in the sky was an influence on this portion in some way. Right. Not, and it was just how like he was able to completely, you know, know what's going on, know when they're in the elevator, know that they're coming, you know, where they're at that, that whole thing, him being able to tap into him and them knowing like they they knew he could actually access them in some way and they were coming for him yeah which was i i couldn't imagine I mean, terrifying knowing they're coming for me yeah it's like being in an area where they're at but knowing i'm their target right he started to learn done. that skill set really quick where he would just like dip into a seizure and then come out of it and be like oh they're downstairs and dip into a seizure come out of it oh they're they're after me <laughs> yeah he was starting to um fast forward his development of that superpower but yeah for all for all you guys that don't know you might be a little uh, young fire in the sky was a movie that came out in the early 90s about an alien abduction where a guy that gets abducted by aliens and then shows up a couple weeks later and uh, he has basically flashbacks, traumatic experiences of his time on an alien ship. It's a very good movie. We actually did a podcast about it uh, uh, a year or so ago. <laughs> so check it out. So Tara just dropped a hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> hey, like Tara. Days. Glad you could uh, join us. We're about to get to uh, Anisha's family. Yeah, we're soon. getting you guys here in just a moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as Casper, this was another one where I was just like, you know, very dramatic, especially when mm -hmm. the aliens finally, I guess, break through the ranks there and get to the hospital and are breaking in. And they seem to be going directly, like making a beeline for Casper. Like they could sense something's up and they're like, yeah, we got to yeah. get to this boy. Well, Trevante actually got like some type of oxygen and made like a flamethrower and yeah. burnt one of these dudes to a crisp. I was like, oh, that, uh, you know fighting fire with fire i like that <laughs> and as soon as he this one's burnt to a crisp another one just comes in the hallway uh, yeah and he's spent talking, by that point yeah talking about like just i mean i would be i don't know i mean i'd be ir irritated 
spent like you said spent i'd be right. uh, disappointed I mean, you know can you imagine the jubilation you would have for finally defeating one of these things right and then his buddy come around the corner <laughs> it reminds me of that scene with the mandalorian fighting the uh the big uh robot shock troopers uh in the finale oh yeah took, yeah it took about 10 yeah. minutes to take down that one and then the door opens up and there's like 20 of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what it turns out to be. I mean, they are really infiltrating the hospital. Like there's, there's the second one that comes in this hallway that goes up into the ceiling tiles and, and, you know, because Casper was in the other room, he put, he put Casper in a room that was safe. So he went up into tiles to get into that room. Right. And then they yanked Casper out and they're running. Next thing you know, they're like, all three of them are back to back and they're surrounding them. Yeah. Which you're like, man, you feel the tension. And then I want to know how he froze them. Well, he kept saying stop. It, literally, the word was stop um, he, where he was he was in tune with them. He was almost like directly speaking with them and he was giving out the the order basically to stop. And you see them. They like they like freeze in place like there's there's really no other interpretation of stop besides like the basic one, which is basically stop in your tracks, like stop what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, totally. And they totally stop like they even even the little skin wiggly things that we've seen up close, like the little yeah. like waves and stuff. Even those were like almost like you press pause on them, which goes all the way back to the, these are synthetics synthetics. Right. Yeah. They, they are being ordered to do something. Right. So it's like it falls right back in line with that, which once again fix an issue that we had in the past where storylines weren't connected now we're like things are all kind of coming together which which is nice and it makes more sense you know why if you're shooting a, an era 15 or some kind of assault rifle and depending on you know the robotics and mechanics the nanotechnology or whatever these things might be made out of yeah maybe the bullet just passes right through and does nothing <laughs> absolutely yeah, it does With, zero as opposed to an organic being which it's kind of hard to believe that, you know, a bunch of bullets wouldn't do some kind of damage to it. So, uh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense now, too. But, yeah, I mean, and, and then this here, this got this got me because they finally get out of the hospital. And Durante is holding Casper. Yeah. And Casper's not responding. Well, he says his mother, his mother, like almost like he sees his mom. And I think we're supposed to almost like we're supposed to, as the audience understand that he's like seeing the light or something. Um, and yeah, it seems as though he's dying in Trevante's arm right now. Which can you imagine being Trevante in that moment though? Mm -mm. He didn't want to go back to a hospital because he lost a child in the hospital. Yeah. He's kind of bonded weirdly with this child. Yeah. And then coming out of the hospital, this one dies in his arms. Well, plus that he understands that this kid is maybe some kind of a key to salvation for the human race. Like it's, yeah. if he's able to make a direct link to these things and literally he was just in a room full of them where that would have meant doom at any other moment. But yeah. because Casper was with them, they were able to get they out of there. They already escaped the situation. So. Um, so for him to lose that link, I mean, that's even doubly devastating. So. Yeah, I I don't I'm not convinced that Casper's gone though. I think maybe he just went into like a a big time coma or passed out from uh, whatever. I don't know, but I think I think we'll open up next episode and maybe uh, Travante he used CPR so much energy, about. whatever it was. It just he was just spent kind of like Baby Yoda used his energy and passes <laughs> out right. for a nap. That's I right, Jamila does say uh, some Jedi Jedi stuff. <laughs> Man, we're referring to Star Wars a lot in this one here. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, we are. Connection <laughs> there. But yeah, and at the end of this one here, I mean, they look up and there is a situation in the sky that we'll be getting to here in a moment. Yeah. Um, so let's head back and finally talk about the uh, the good family in Log Island here that we've been uh, following along since the beginning. We've got Luke and Sarah, of course, the kids. Uh, Sarah slash Tara is with us tonight. Glad you could <laughs> join us. Um, and Ahmed and Anisha. So yeah, uh, everything seemed to be on the up and up for at first, like very hopeful, like the scientists are studying the effects of this black rock. Yeah, they got thing. it close and then they dropped some type of like liquid on it. Acid. Yeah. And it dissolved the whole thing. It didn't like, it didn't either uh, regenerate or anything. It just, the whole thing was gone. And once they seen that, they're like, Oh, we're taking you guys to the Pentagon. Right. You Everything guys are a valuable asset. We need to get you guys to some more important take care of you. And, Man, it turned sideways on them. Literally sideways on them. I know. Oh, yeah, literally. <laughs> um, yeah, that is one part of this where 
I guess it's believable that at this point you may have so many of your assets spent and be spread so thin as a military unit that you can only afford one vehicle to transport this family in. Um, if you had an asset as, as important as you would think that Anisha and her family is with this rock thing, yeah. um, you would, I would think you would have a helicopter in the sky. You would have something more than just this one vehicle, but yeah, because be they have convoy this, taking them. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, it's like, we're not in normal times right now. You know what I mean? The, the military spread pretty thin. Um, so Dope. Did I disappear? Or did you disappear? Oh no, no, no! You're good. I'm reading a comment. Okay. As long. It was a <laughs> you pretty were big so com- still. I thought you were frozen. <laughs> That's funny. Like that I was a pretty big stop. comment that was just dropped here. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, but that's the only thing. But yeah, so as they're on the way in this vehicle, um, they <laughs> that's another thing. These civvies, apparently, the civilians. But I guess they were joined with one guy that was at least uh, in military. They took. They got the the best and the better of this big vehicle and, and took them down. Yeah, real quick, I just want to drop a uh, thanks for checking us out, Ali. I know if, you, if you're if you're actually prolonging this as long as you are, uh, don't stick around for too long. Yeah, because we'll go ahead and uh, we're full fledged ruining it for you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we're definitely uh, talking about all the spoilers here, which we're pretty bad about p- saying that up front. But we just figure if we're called an after show, we're definitely going to be talking about it as though you just watched it. Watched it. We're talking about it after the show. So. Uh, but yeah, we're gl- definitely glad you're enjoying it. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for checking us out. We we appreciate you know the uh, the love there that uh, yeah. you're giving us here. So, but thanks so much. Check us out and drop comments. Let us know after you, you watched it if you agree with what we were talking about. If you didn't, if we've missed something that you picked up on, which uh, we do a lot, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we love we love the interaction and everything. So that's one thing that makes us uh, even more enjoyable for us. Yeah. So I I couldn't believe it honestly when this trick when this truck flipped over I couldn't believe this was one more knockdown fight that Anisha and her family had to go through like and they have can... taken a thumping yeah. I mean from the yeah, very dude. beginning there has not been an easy moment for them <laughs> even the kids yeah that got in the car wreck have had easy moments walking back to London oh getting a car ride back. You right. know, walking and, you know, finding a it, truck with chocolate and just yeah, having exactly. a moment. Yeah, it's been one thing after another with them. And it's it's man, it's rough. It and and rough. they find it. They find a way to get away. But we find out one of the soldiers that are going after her was one of the ones she had a relationship with. Yeah. That knew her as uh, Angela Lockhart. Yeah. Which was a positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which we find out. But uh, it's so I don't know what these guys are up to, I guess. Are they convinced that I don't know why they were why were they chasing them? I'll just ask you. Why the heck I were they chasing? I think they're after the that alien that piece of alien like rock or that rock. Yeah, yeah, whatever whatever they have. I think they they were going after that. So and, were there plans to take that so they could maybe have safety for maybe five people as opposed to getting it to the government who might have the resources to find out what's up with this rock and actually find let it be the key to defeating the aliens as a whole? Like what's I think did they have a thought of their heads as far as, you know, step one, step two or I think I, once mass hysteria sets in, they're more looking out for themselves than anyone else. And if yeah. they have some type of like weapon or something to protect themselves in an area. I think that honestly, I think that's what they were thinking. I think they're looking out for one, not for all. I, yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to think that they're thinking. But when you start to think about this logically, which I guess maybe logic's thrown out the window at this point, um, in the alien invasion, but it's just, it made no sense to me. It's just another scary thing where things are topsy turvy and, um, they, it's one more thing that, uh, that the family has to deal with, which and sucks. Man, the kids are sitting there in the back of that truck. And they're already scared. Yeah. And the, next thing you know, the, the tire blows out. It flips over. They're screaming. And, some yeah. great screaming and, and terror from both Luke and Sarah, like which they've been very good at this whole season, yeah. <laughs> which unfortunately they've had to do a lot of. This yes. They're, they're scared a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they get out of the, the, the basically the top hatch of the truck and they just run into the woods. I mean, they just take off, which yeah. I mean, I would too. What else could you do? At I'm that gone. Point? Yeah, if, if I can run and I'm I'm going. And these and, guys, these uh, you know civilians with with guns and this one at least one military guy, they're calling out. They're like, "Hey, it's okay, come out." You know, I have kids too, and it's okay. Yeah, they're really being trying to be convincing that as though they were not going to harm. Well, once I seen the one family. guy that we knew, 
Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, maybe the guys in the original truck they were in, they were able to fight him off. Right. That was my original thought. And then when he started calling her by a different name, yeah, I was starting to become a little more suspicious. And and Ahmed read it immediately. He did. This is so. This is Ahmed's end game essentially. This whole season, I've been waiting for Ahmed to basically sacrifice himself so that you know Anisha and her two kids can move on and survive. Yeah. Just from the poster alone, right? Um, it, one of the posters is Anisha and Luke and Sarah running uh, themselves. And Ahmed, you know, he did something fairly unforgivable at the beginning of the show. And just the way his feelings was, was like the only way that he'd be able to basically redeem himself is to, um, you know, sacrifice himself basically for sa- yeah. kids. And uh, yeah, I wasn't seeing a, a bullet to the forehead, though. I mean, no, no, I, I wasn't thought, either. And from, yeah, from basically the U.S. government, I thought maybe it would just be an alien that he distracted he ran one way and it went after him and the kids and then you know anisha went the other direction yeah uh, i've seen more of that situation happening but uh the minute he started calling her by uh, dr lockhart you know when, when he starts calling that out right and then giving him more time and then yeah, he Ahmed you know, uses, it, uses it to his advantage where he's like angela like calling for her yeah. as an indication to let anisha, anisha know that something's not right run keep yeah. going this this situation is not right yeah, where finally he just yells out run and he gets a bullet because of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which... yeah, he just calls her by her name. Anisha, run. Yeah. And they take off and it, and then uh, Luke is terrified. Oh, yeah. Luke, Luke hits both... the shot. And Sarah, once again, Sarah's yelling out for daddy and it yeah. just like breaks your heart. You're like, oh, God, like these poor kids just well, run. Then Anisha <laughs> takes a tumble. She goes down yeah. the hill. Yeah. I thought for sure she had smacked her head and was unconscious, but luckily that that wasn't the case. She she kind of steps up and she finds this huge like part of this forest, which is just laid out with all these black spores that the aliens have been leaving on different surfaces. Um, And there's like this huge area, the biggest area that we've seen so far. Um, And this black rock is just like parting the seas of it. She's able to walk kind of through it. Yeah. Which which if they get to the other side, I mean, that's kind of their, you know. Mm -hmm. Their moat, in essence, they got around it. They get through yeah. it, and they, you know everyone else would not be able to, you know, follow suit. Yeah. Um. So that was cool. Essentially, the kid. It seems as though the kids have put some distance between themselves and um the the people chasing them. And as Anisha stands up, she's got her kids in her arms, and she looks up, and she. This is where everything is edited together. The part where Trevante had Casper in his arms. They look up and they see this big ball of fire in the sky where, you know, the snook has gone off. We don't know for sure what the effect is or what the results are, but yeah, uh, we do see the nuke go off in the sky. Yeah, we're going to play the clip here. Typically, guys, where there is music or something with the clip, uh, the David Bowie song is playing with this, and we weren't messing with Bowie. Yeah, you two got rest the soul. Yeah, real so, uh, quick. It's going to be a clip with no audio. Uh, we're probably going to talk a little bit, you know, while yeah. it's going as well to give you guys a heads up. So here we go. Just this yeah, like is you're... ground control. We'll just sing Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're saying, like they're at that, they're at the end, and they're looking up. Yeah, they're and... just been put through the ringer at this point. Yeah. Um, but I, that's got to be some sort of feeling, like. I don't know. I would be scared. Like, is this some sort of alien death ray? Like, is this like the Death Star finally shooting the ray to put the, you know, end it for once in a for all yeah, in yeah. the coffin? Or did we back, you know, send something up there? Well, there is later in the clip. I mean, not, we only got maybe about a 15 second, 20 second clip over there. But I think it's either when uh, I think it's with Trevante, you actually see something falling out right. of the sky. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like they actually hit what they were looking for and it was, you know, successful. Now it's fallen to the earth. If it's, you know, if it's not completely destroyed, uh, you know, game on. But it, it really sets up for an interesting finale of the show. Yeah. Because now, okay, now was that was that the ship that was in Oklahoma? I keep on going back to Oklahoma. Was was that the ship that we seen in the sky? Uh, above the crop circle with uh was sam neil all right or was that was that little was that a little ship going back to the main ship you know what i, I mean i forgot all about the oklahoma stuff because it was so important that very first episode and we haven't returned to it at all um 
we'll see. I mean, next episode is the last one. Do you think there's room? Do you think we'll finally go back to Oklahoma? In the, I think uh, I think we're done with it. Really? Okay. I honestly think we're done with it. As much yeah. as they made it think, made us feel like it was actually important for the show. Yeah. Uh, it was an important way to put a named actor in the show for us to start watching. Right. That's essentially what they did to us. That was a a hundred percent a bait and switch situation, which. Oh, wow. It happens, whatever. But uh, <laughs> we've moved on. That was yeah. just the first episode. Yeah. It was a little confusing, but we've moved on. Um, but yeah, so that's essentially it for the this episode. Um, where honestly, this could have been a finale, as yeah. far as like a cliffhanger, as far as like where do we go from here, or like what happens with Casper we... being the situation he is with Anisha just, yeah. and the kids stuck in the woods and I'm dead. Yeah, uh, well, well, that's a bad way to put it, but you know, he's no longer with us. Right. Uh, and then you know, you're seeing the thing falling out of the sky, and you you see uh, Matsuri just laying in the dish looking up. Yeah, that was so, quite a shot. Her laying down in this huge satellite dish that was kind of cool. So, I mean, all of those actual individual spots would have been a great way to end a season. Yeah, yeah, but we actually have a full episode to see what the aftermath is here yeah and madeline's looking uh, looking forward to it also because because, because it's, it's over <laughs> <laughs> i like it you had me because i didn't read the very end <laughs> that's funny <laughs> madeline maybe maybe it'll end on a really high note we're not sure I, and honestly i it could be it's i'm 50 50 it could go either way at the end of episode 10 Honestly, there's a way for them to end this thing where I could be like, oh, man, I'm actually looking forward to a season two now to be curious yeah. about where this thing goes. Um, or it could be the opposite where I'm like, OK, well, that was an interesting experiment of a TV show and yeah. I'm ready to move on. Yeah. I'm not foreseeing them at you know extending that type of thing. But yeah, it, 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 this, like I said earlier, this actual episode has given me hope that they may be able to stick to landing yeah. because this episode was. you I, OK, no, I'll give it to you. This was the best episode. Hey, all right. No, I, no, I'll go ahead and I'll give it to you. I'll give you it. It was the best episode. I, you know, Home Invasion was a different type of episode within the whole show. Yeah. Because this this episode actually followed the way the episode other episodes were, just better done, editing right. the works. Home Invasion was a standalone episode. And it says, "I can't see this getting renewed." Can you? I'll say the first. Most of the first part of the season, I was like, no, but it really just depends on how it ends. I haven't seen a as much, uh, you know, media coverage and such about this show. It's really fallen off. Chris and I have t discussed, you know, it seems like Apple TV plus itself is kind of burying the show. Under, even, yeah, it's, it's hard to of, find on their app in any, yeah. any way on any of their media. Yeah, a lot of other content is kind of being buried, but I don't know. We'll see. You know, I have not heard any news reports that it that it will be, but um hopefully if, if it's not hopefully it ends in a way that's satisfying honestly that would be nice yeah i mean uh ali was saying you know, there's other great shows on there as well i mean foundations is great i i was three episodes in and then i got pulled aside and haven't gone back to it because there's so much other things but dude, don't apologize for your comments even if they break our rhythm a little bit no that's uh, fine we love them no. i was just actually ali i was just saving uh because saving you towards the end here uh, because you did uh, do it a few times here. Well, we definitely appreciate you watching up till episode six. And uh, oh, he mentioned that he thought the pacing was actually um, enjoyable, which um, I'm actually I'm I'm half and half because I know you and I have had complained about the pacing throughout spots of this show. Um, but at the same time, it's like I also appreciated what they were trying to do. They were trying to let us get invested in these characters um and instead of getting invested in the big spectacle of an alien invasion of it yeah. all really give us time to get to know these characters which at this point it's now paying that i'm off now yeah it is paying off now now that i off. see anisha's family running through the woods and i see trevante and casper together like well, i'm there even ahmed's death in this one i was like oh right because yeah for the longest time i couldn't care about this guy i thought he was just a dirt bag yeah and if we didn't get him in the diner if we didn't get him in, you know, in the farmhouse and home invasion, if we didn't get him in other episodes, I wouldn't have cared about this. You know, him taking the blow. I'm like, you know what? OK, he's paid his due to his family. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, OK. But yeah, I mean, all of it, even, you know, the Matsuki Hin Hinata relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of it. Yeah, they've actually I mean, they 
it's been paying off. Uh, Ali actually has a uh, another idea here too, maybe in response to to Madeline's, is that he thinks that the show may be going for multiple seasons, uh, hence relatively the steady uh, steady pace, which you and I had talked about. Like maybe they're really taking their time because they plan on this thing being a long story, you yeah. know, um, you know, an elongated version of Heroes. Which I were you a big fan of Heroes on NBC back then? I day? enjoyed Heroes for like season one or two, right? And then right, kind of fell off. Kind of fell off, but yeah, that's a little bit of nostalgia. <laughs> I was into that show. Save that's the show I heard for save a while. The world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, with World of Worlds, yeah, that that too the. the both the book and the radio play, Tom Cruise movie, all that stuff. It's going to be really interesting. I think it, I don't know if they're going to know right out the gate, if it's going to be a show that they're going to go ahead and renew. It's going to be one of those. Once the show's over, how much legs will right. the show have? Yeah. Um, let's see. It was extremely scary. That uh, rotisserie scene was tough. Um, oh yeah. Maybe. Um, Maybe uh, how they flip the uh, truck over. I don't know. Terry, you'll have to let us know. Yeah. Were you guys actually in like some type of like. I would imagine because there was a shot where the it was kind of spinning. So maybe maybe they did have it on some kind of a rig. Yeah, that that's crazy. I mean, that, that would be that would be a crazy scene to shoot. Because when you think about it, it would be difficult not to get injured, too, in an actual yeah. you know, setup like that. So I, I can see the the fear being real. And like right. the screaming and everything from both, you know, Tara and uh, the little the guy that plays Luke. I'm not sure of his name off the top of my head. Oh, uh, well, Luke is Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy Roberts. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I looked over to the right. I was like, there he is. There, yeah, you made the notes, pal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boy, <laughs> shame on me. But um, what do you um, think? Okay, so let's just wrap this. What, as an episode as a whole, this one here, uh, we've already both. I've come to an agreement with you every time you kind of beat me down. Uh, best episode of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything that you really? didn't like or liked more than another in this particular episode um no i mean overall this felt like a very engaging episode of invasion and it left me in a place where i'm super curious about what happens in episode 10 which if you asked me a few episodes ago would i feel that way and i'd be pretty hesitant to be like oh man because we were just, there was a point, look, there's a point season or uh, episode five, episode six, where you and I were like, oh man, we've still got too many episodes. Well, of this I show actually yet. honestly asked you early on is like, do we, will there be a point where we would pull the plug on an after show? Right. And you're like, no, let, let's just go ahead and see this out. So it's yeah, on you. Yeah, we, we went, if it was up to me, I think at one point I'd be like, mm, I don't know if I want to continue doing well, this. Well, a lot so. of folks at large where they checked out the first three that dropped that first weekend and, you know, didn't stick with it. But honestly, now I'm glad I am did because I'm invested. I There are some characters in this show that I'm really invested in. Um, you know, Sarah, Luke, Anisha, like I'm totally want to see what happens with them. Travante and Casper, that little dynamic duo. I want them to be okay um mitsuki storyline is just like eh, it's give or take at this point yeah yeah um but there's some i'm really invested in some of these characters and I, i'm really curious to see what happens now like now that a nuke has gone off in the sky what now what's the what's the status quo here because we only seen a nuke in the sky once before now's armageddon yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> right but uh, uh Tara says, I will post the behind the scene of rotisserie scene and flipping over the truck tomorrow in my Instagram page. There you go. Guys, if you haven't followed uh, Tara on her Instagram page, Tara, if you could follow that uh, or uh, post that up here too, uh, whatever your at uh, Instagram name is, yeah. we'll, we'll post it here. That would be incredibly interesting to see um, how they did that because that was a crazy shot. Yeah, that, that would be found. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for yeah. me as a whole in this one here, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I care more about casper now than i ever did like at first the yeah, whole kids scene the beginning of the whole kids that was my least favorite storyline right and ever since they went ahead and merged his storyline and uh, toronto's storyline it made both of those characters even more enjoyable yeah so there was that and we always i mean the uh the malik family that was always kind of one of the highlights along the way but then matsuki it, it was weird it was a weird feeling because matsuki we felt like had the most uh, interesting storyline, I should say. The one that right. actually had the yeah, uh, the one that had the most potential, promise. yeah. And it kind of slowed down, and it, it was actually, I think, jumped by the other two. 
Right. And I like how there's only three storylines now rather than jumping to four different locations, which I think helps the actual uh, show itself. I do like that as we've progressed here, um, these storylines have made sense. Like each of the these characters and these stories have a stake into what this final key of defeating these aliens could be, whether it's Casper's internal communication with them, whether it's the this this rock that could be a weapon to destroy them yeah. with uh, Anisha's family, and and then finally the actual uh, communication with Mitsuki, where she was almost like weapon, where the aliens weaponized her videos and stuff, but they, she was also able to give the U.S. military time to do what they could do yeah. to defeat the aliens. So, so she was doing one thing, not realizing realizing she'll do it, while she yeah. was trying to satisfy her need to find out if Hanada was alive. Right, which is, uh, yeah, which is crazy. So all in all, I mean, uh, I, I honestly, this is a great episode of TV, a great episode of Invasion, and I can't wait to see what happens next week. Well, there we go, guys. So we're going into the last week of Invasion. Uh, if I'll say it again. If you guys haven't followed us already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure you check us out for this final episode. Uh, I've always said if you haven't been a big fan of the show, the Invasion itself, checking this out weekly just to see what we think and uh it may you know change your mind a little bit or you just enjoy watching us i don't know it's uh it's always fun but uh who, who are we sean what do we do uh we are dad and rock we're here each and every saturday at 10 p.m eastern standard time to discuss invasion that's the after show we're doing right now previously we've done after shows on ted lasso wandavision a lot of the marvel stuff mandalorian um and coming up soon we'll be doing our uh reviews the eight days of witcher for the holidays here now that the witcher season two will be dropping on netflix that'll be fun for us it'll be eight straight days in a row of, of content we'll hopefully you won't get annoyed with us there'll be shorter videos <laughs> yeah they it won't be live be videos hour. yeah but yeah exactly i think we'll do i think we've discussed doing one live wrap up uh, right. a couple of days afterwards so we can kind of talk with you guys and see what you guys thought but uh yeah that should be fun uh, be sure to check out, uh, search out uh, Tara's Instagram there. Uh, she's got some exclusive behind the scenes stuff. So we'll definitely be looking forward for that. Tara, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then a uh, newcomer here to the show, Ali, uh, just an observation regarding Casper until uh, up till episode six. I think he has temporal lobe epilepsy. That's interesting. Characterized by deeply religious spiritual visions of extraterrestrials other dimensions time traveling wow he's, wow that's into it uh seizure episode the meaning of these visions are highly controversial among neurologists that's crazy oh you know what i that seems familiar i think there was a movie um called either the sixth invasion or something along those lines with uh, mila jovovich that came out a few years ago where she was having like medical things and she didn't know if it was like an alien uh, invasion kind of thing um but yeah that's interesting and madeline finally thanks guys madeline thank you as always thank yeah you you've been tagging us. along this whole time so thank you <laughs> yeah we appreciate you watching the invasion and watching us afterwards okay well guys i i think that is a pretty much a wrap for this week uh like we always say, go ahead and keep it cheesy. See ya.